today's video, we're going to talk about a question that came in from a swimmer. A swimmer who is in the foundation program and is learning about bobbing. When we start learning bobbing, we start with a full breath of air. But as you start to advance with it, you start to exchange your air and your air makes a big difference in what your buoyancy level is. And this is something we have to play with too. Now, first as a safety tip, you always have to have air easy. So if you're gonna experiment with this, you need to make sure that you have a backup way to get air. The first backup way is actually to start over in the shallow end. Second backup way is to make sure you have somebody like me with you or a lifeguard or a spotter or somebody who, if it doesn't quite work out and you go to the bottom and you're not sure what to do or you panic a little bit because it's a new and unexpected thing, you want to make sure you've got somebody there to help you out if you need it. But we're going to show you some tips today on what you can do so you have some things to play with when you have that backup plan. All right, so today I have a helper with us. Somebody who's less buoyant than I am. This is one of my kids. <laughs> so what we're going to start out with is just showing the vertical float. So our vertical float is something that we play with where we belly up into the wall and take a nice big full breath and we find out where our buoyancy point is. Now, because we have two different bodies, our buoyancy point is different with different amounts of air. So we'll both go under with a big full breath of air and find out where does the water hold me when I don't do anything. I'm so buoyant. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so you can see there's a big difference. I was holding the air in my chest. Hi, we have another helper. <laughs> holding the air in my chest and I was really super high and he was under the water. Both totally normal. This time, let's see what happens when we let our air out. So we'll take a breath, hold it, and then slowly let our air out and you can see where it happens to us. You can see we both go down, but we go down to different places. He'll come up. <laughs> there we go. So the question is, what do we do when we go down like that if we let our air out? That's what we're gonna show you today. So the first thing that we can do is if you get all the way to the bottom, is you can jump up off the bottom using your feet. The second one we can do is use our hands. We can power up with our hands. The amount of pressure and the amount of power you're gonna use in your hands is different when you're less buoyant, depending on your buoyancy level. If you have lots of buoyancy, you don't need as much push. If you have less buoyancy, you need more push. This is part of what you would learn in this exercise. Our third tip for this is sometimes it's better to go down and then come up. If we're very close to the bottom, it's easier and faster to jump off the bottom. So sometimes you might actually need to use your hands to push yourself down. So you go that extra little foot and then jump up off the bottom. Fourth one is because air always has to be easy, you might just take a rope and climb up using the rope. This would be especially true, again, learn this when you have somebody as a backup, but then you could use this as your own safety backup. And lastly, especially when you're on the learning curve, have somebody available who can bring you up together. 